Welcome, my name is Chris Morgan, and we're going to start now with part two of our Reactor Subtractive Synth video series. I'm going to launch Reactor, and I'm just going to repeat what we did in the last, the first video, and then we'll move ahead a few steps. So I'm going to go quickly through that again. You can see I've come up with an untitled ensemble. I'm going to now make a new ensemble, which is going to give me an instrument here. I'll double click on that instrument. I'm seeing the panel, the little bit of panel here. I'm going to double click on that and I see the structure of the interior of the instrument. As I double click anywhere on the blank space, it takes me up a level. I can see the level of my interface, outputs, inputs, and the instrument. I will control click, add a master instrument, and then double click on the instrument and I can see the unhooked up um, voice combiners. I get rid of that because I just don't need the stereo type of output. And now we're going to redo what we did in the last video. So I'm looking here at the structure. I will control click built-in module oscillator to add a saw with the FM capability. Hook that up. It lights up. Built-in module MIDI in note pitch to get pitch in. And the same thing built-in module MIDI in gate. And now I've got as something to turn the notes amplitude on and off. The default value range for MIDI velocity is 0 to 127, but that range is mapped on to regular computer amplitude values that go from 0 to 1, um, but we know that since the wave shape is a bipolar signal and it has values that go from positive 1 to negative 1, the 0 to 1 amplitude is, is mapped on to the negative 1 to positive 1 amplitude. So. This is exactly where we were last time, and of course the volume is too loud, so I'm going to switch over to the panel and scooch over here to my volume and turn that down, because the way it was now is fully modulated. We don't need to hear that full amplitude. And in this view, I can have a split screen and over here look at the panel while I'm editing the synthesizer. So I don't need these inputs. I'll, I can just get rid of them for the sake of screen real estate. Notice that as I go up back up a level, the inputs disappeared. And if I wanted to bring them back, those inlets uh, will reappear. So I can always bring things back. If I double click on any object, the left hand panel over here is the preferences for that. And so if I click on that, um, well, sorry, that took me down a level. But I can see over here um, the, the inlets and outlets. So let me click on here as a better example. Function, Info, View, Connect, um, there's nothing to connect there, but definitely on Function I can see a couple things there. Uh, with Gate especially, I can see there's the minimum and maximum range 0 to 1, which for amplitude we always want to leave it that way. And you can see it's limiting the MIDI, or it, the MIDI range is 0 to 127. So not much there, but in terms of the inlets and outlets, uh, we can add those by clicking one time here, and you can see that I can... Um, can add those somewhere. Scratch that for now. Okay, so now, here we go. Sorry, under the, um, the connect page. In that case, I would just have to add them manually, which is probably a good, good thing to see here. If I can go here and command click, I can add those inlets back in. Also, if they were, here they are, I just added them. Yeah, I can also add those elsewhere as well, but that's not important. If I control click just to show that though, under terminal, there's an import, and I can do that again, terminal, import. But again, we don't need any of that right now. So. <clears throat> I've got my um, one wave shape, and I'm going to now give myself the options of having multiple wave shapes instead of just this one. So there's two parts here. I'm going to add several other wave shapes, and then I'm going to put a switch there to choose between. So I'll go in here, control click, built-in module, oscillator, triangle FM, same thing, built-in module, oscillator, Sine FM, I skipped over the parabola one for now, oscillator, uh, 
Pulse FM, and lastly, built-in module, oscillator noise. These are standard fare for subtractive synths, and I'll just put each of these in order here. Uh, I might put them in order of, of their spectral complexity, and um, perhaps like that, and, and maybe start with the sine wave since it's the simplest, and then just go with a really rich ramp wave, and then the square wave, and the triangle wave, and um, so not quite in order of spectral richness, but, but some logic there. Now, I can only have one out, one thing hooked up to an inlet at a time. If I try to connect this one here to the voice combiner, it's not really meant to combine multiple streams. It's really meant to combine multiple notes of polyphony. So uh, Reactor will not allow you to have more than one thing hooked up to the input of another object. So I'm, in this case, I could have multiple things go to a mixer and mix them down, but all I want is to be able to choose between sine, ramp, square, or pulse, as in this case, triangle, and noise. So here we're going to bring our first object that's going to show up in the instruments panel down here. Control click, built in, go to panel, and we'll choose switch. And you'll see right now a, a switch shows up here. If I click on the wrench, I can edit that and move that over a little bit. And the switch just has one inlet. So just as we saw a second ago where I added inlets, I'm going to show you how to add more inlets. So I'm going to take the sign output, hook it up to the switch, and now the another keyboard shortcut you've been using control click now for the first time you're going to use command click so command click on the ramp waves output as I go to the dot 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 that's on the bottom there of the switch it will add an inlet the same way I added an inlet earlier to the instrument same thing add command click drag command click drag command click drag it's very important at this point and I'm gonna go ahead and hook the panel up to the Thing to label them while it's fresh in your mind because you won't do it later. So sign, I double click. I, I just call this a ramp wave, or you could call it saw. And I'm gonna, even though this is a pulse wave, I'll call it square. It's a little more traditional. And then triangle, and then finally noise. And I hook that up to the voice combiner, so that's there. So now when we look in our window here, we have this set of the options we can choose. So if we listen to that, I'll go ahead and hook up the pitch to each one of these. There's not a fast way to do this, unfortunately, and normally I would avoid doing this because I'm going to have to rehook it all back up in, a, in the next video because we're going to add an envelope generator. Notice how the noise does the d noise generator does not have a pitch, of course, because noise is is not periodic signal does not have pitch, but it does have amplitude. So now I should hear if I I don't hear anything first because the switch is not turned on, but taking out of the wrench mode, I can click on sine, ramp, square, triangle, and noise. And so now we've got multiple wave shapes to choose from, each one with, of course, pitch and gate. And we'll close here, and we'll reopen this for the next video.